What's up, y'all? I know we normally have reviews on this channel, but this week I'm interviewing Chief Green for the Blank His Life interview series. Check out his story. We had some fun sitting down for this one. Peace. So before we get into the ganja and all, the, all this good shit, I wanted to ask you, you know, tell me about where you come from, where you originate, bro. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, South Central mm -hmm. LA, um, Crenshaw District, rough like 4th Ave, 60th, 81st, but along all the good stuff. Graduated from Westchester High School. So, you know, I'm a good Los Angeles reputable, you know what I'm saying? You can definitely check my resume. Uh, then, you know, from there, graduated high school, moved to Atlanta, went to college for a bit, then got a little distracted and, you know, from here to there, then my Kanye with the college dropout okay. bullshit, you know. But that's neither here nor there, you know what I'm saying? Word. We're entrepreneur and shit, so. And so you, like me, are a person that has a lifelong relationship with weed. Yes. Yeah, so sir. tell me Life about. Long. Tell me about the first time you remember smoking good gas. Ooh, good gas. Yeah. Shit. Uh, probably like eleventh or twelfth grade. Okay. We smoke weed before that, but you know, being but, from yeah. LA, you know, but what to get to the good, you, you yeah, know what I'm you start off smoking some of that stress and all that type of shit. It ain't like how it is nowadays, where motherfuckers start off smoking gas. You know what I'm saying? It That's crazy like how that. mids don't exist no more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Prior to mids, like I said, it was stress, like <laughs> it's rich, nigga. But anyway, okay, gas in probably like 11th grade, smoking with my sister Brandy, Brandy Kane. Hiding behind the house, duck behind the Smoking house. Smoking with family is little, the major uh, key. She had this pipe she had got from the African festival. And I remember, i never forget. Was it wooden? Here, it was windy as fuck. A wooden? No, it was, it was glass, as a matter of fact. Oh, for real? And that's the part I was about to get to. So it was a glass pipe, and we was duck behind the fence, behind the house on a windy-ass day, trying to light this shit, and the lighter kept blowing out, bro. And I just kept remembering. I like, man, I felt like a crackhead. I felt like a crackhead. <laughs> and so, like, from that day, like, I didn't even smoke for a while after that. And then, uh... Probably like graduation, like close to senior year, graduating is when I probably picked that shit up again heavy. Okay. Because, you know, I was an athlete during high school. You know, those athletes got to keep their bodies in tip top shape. What sport did you play? Uh, I played baseball and volleyball, believe it or not. Volleyball? So, volleyball. I don't know volleyball. why that reminds me of uh, how high. We've got hatred for the white devil, followed oh. by advanced hatred for the white <laughs> devil and volleyball. <laughs> Fact. Okay, yep. so that's how you got started, and we know how you got down here. Really? So when did you start, when did you realize that you wanted to do something with music, and was that before you started wanting to do something with we on more than it just making money type shit? Um, so the music thing was one of those subconscious plant type things that I probably was always geared towards that I didn't really realize, not until I actually got to Atlanta, and my buddy AK hit me up with my uh, big bro. Deuce, love, hate records, you know what I'm saying? And they put me in the studio, fuck around, we was in there smoking. And then ever since then, shit, I just been at it and it just, okay. you know what I'm saying? I guess it was always in me with something that I just literally fell in love with at that point and just chasing so, a now. So your style is, you know, it's it's, it's definitely your own, but what, what was you fucking with growing up? Like, not necessarily um, your influences, but anything that made you want to rap. Shit, Wu-Tang. Me too. Wu-Tang, and to be quite honest, outside in the Wu-Tang, one outside of like Method Man and your obvious favorites. I, you know my next question? Yeah. Oh, Dirty Bastard. See, I grew up loving o OD. O-D fucking B. Which check me out. Nigga, bro. I, I grew up loving ODB, but as I got a little older, I started to really develop a love for Bulletproof Wallets. Okay. Raekwon and Ghostface. Yeah. I feel like they like, that's like, not Jordan and Pippen, that's, that's like Carl Malone and John like, that's Stockton. A, that's supreme lyricism. Right. See, I've always been a fan of lyricism, but I've always been more drawn to artists with flavor and style. That's why I like Ghostface. Yeah, yeah, but, well, it, my personal opinion, not no one had more flavor and style than ODB. Like, oh, yeah. That's total original, like nothing, like ever, no, nothing's ever sounded like that to this day. Like, you got, go, I mean, you got Action Bronson right now sound like, what's it called? All day long. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Nobody sounds like ODB. You that's, feel me? Nobody sounds like E-40. That's another person that I fucking love. You know, speaking up. of the Mac Dre. Like, I'm glad you're, I was about to, 
that was a, that was my next question. Is you know talk about a dude with style. Yeah, I'm, I come from, from Kansas City. Okay, and out there. Oh, you already know that. Yeah, so Kansas City is it, it's like. It's like a West Coast city in the middle of the map. It sure is. But uh, Mac Dre was real, real hot out there, and yeah. that's a guy that I saw as far as having style and not sound like anybody else. So, yeah, that's dope that you uh, – yeah, man, one time for the Chris. Yep. For yep. real, one for real. for the Chris. So when did you start actually making music, and was it good at first, or did it start off shitty? Uh, well, I think it was good. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's what no, that's you know what I'm talking saying? about. That's what's important. I think it's yeah. good, but have I grown? Yes, you know what I'm saying. Do I have more knowledge of self and and of just <clears throat> my craft to where I can just approach it differently? Hell, fucking yeah. So, is, does it sound better now? Yeah, but you know, there's then I don't know, but you know, <laughs> do you record the same way now? I don't. I okay. used to write a lot. I used to write a lot. Just always write my shit down first. Like, you know what I'm saying? Spend, you know, just time, hour, 30 minutes, whatever it took to write a verse. Just make sure it was all on paper first. Write it down, learn it, and then rap it. Now, my approach is more so, I guess it's kind of like how cats just do it. Now, how the engineers and the speed of the industry, the pace of shit, like cats be knocking songs out. So, like, you get in there with some of these newer engineers, they can record you on the fly with punching in. So, like Alex yeah. Tume, Young Thug's engineer. I've been keeping up on him. Okay, you're right. So it's kind of like a, um, it's like what they call punching in to where like where I would write a whole verse or a whole song, and if I fucked up one line, I, you could just go punch in and finish the verse off. Now it's like I might just go in there with that same vibe of those, you know what I'm saying, to where like where I used to might struggle to get those words on paper and mm -hmm. try not to forget them right. as I'm getting like, ooh, let me get this shit out real quick. And then reading what you and, wrote. You're right. And trying awesome. to figure out what the fuck did I write, this chicken scratch, that shit. Now it's just like going there with the vibe, say that shit. And you know what I'm saying? Shit, punch, just punch in. So it's like, it's still the same process, just minus the pen and the paper now. Okay. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Some cats say that's just called freestyling. I wouldn't consider that a freestyle Real unless you can yeah. go from top to bottom. Knock it out. You know, you know what I'm saying? I would, I, would, I, would, I think Wayne was kind of the, the pioneer for punching in because I remember seeing the documentary and he had the, um, in the booth, I'd never seen somebody look at their vocals right. and like be able to point. Like, right. that's cool because if you don't speak the language of an engineer, right. it can be hard to communicate with one to yeah. say, I would like this. Exactly. So I think punching in has made it easier for a lot of artists to create fire as music. Yeah. You just stay in the, in the element in the zone opposed to you know, stepping out of it and trying to read it or write it down. You know what I mean? Capture it on paper. Just And so you go to the studio and vibe and try to come out with some music yeah. as, as opposed to, you know, going in I mean, with, 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 with a battle plan. All day through life, I'm fucking thinking of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like if I get instrumentals sent to me, like I'll have hooks that I might, two or three hooks in my head or that I or what, what's it called? So when I'm in the studio and the beats come on, I already pretty much have an idea of something that I want to say or something in general that I want to express. Mm -hmm. And so I do so, and then it comes out, you know what I'm saying? You just try to find your cadences after that and knock it out. So you know I'm saying? I, like to, I like to do catchy hooks, you know what I'm saying? I like repetitive yeah, no, type hooks. The, the hooks you know be saying? slapping. So do you collaborate with many other artists, and have you ever... Um, I guess my question is, what's it like to collaborate with somebody that's not in the same room with you? I haven't really collaborated with a lot of artists not in the same room. Okay. To be honest with you. Um, I know <coughs> that is how it was done nowadays, but... <coughs> excuse me, past his blood. <coughs> I haven't done it a lot. And um, like I said, like, like I, I guess like my homeboy Deuce, my big bro that uh, kind of introduced me to the, to, the, to the music or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, got this level thing called Love, Hate, so... Love, hate? That, yeah. That, that's y'all's uh, conglomerate? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, cool, cool. the way that he, he kind of always got down was he's big on vibe, big on, like, like he's kind of linked me with some artists that we're supposed to do music with, but it's always like, well, I can just shoot him the beats, and that can be like, nah, man, we just got to get together, da, da, da. And, and, you know, and with that patience, and when it, when it works out that way, it comes out a lot better, you know okay. what I'm saying, in my personal opinion. And so that's just how I kind of get down um, with the, a lot of different artists I haven't worked with a lot. There's a lot of, I have a lot of homies that are in the industry that have made it pretty big and that are semi big and big on the underground level um, that I, I haven't worked with, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, for one reason or the other. But, uh, well, who would you like to? 
to work with. Yeah, just off top. What, off you know. top shit. I'm yeah. Go ahead and take it to the top shit. I gotta knock out that Snoop Dogg. Uncle that Snoop. E Forty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to knock. I want to knock out the legends. First. Forty Water will fuck with you too. You know what I'm saying? I think he would. I think Forty Water. Fuck if he, yeah. If he came across this shit, he would love it. You know what I'm saying? I I, I know he would, but you know, that's all in due time. But oh yeah. So as far as like current younger artists, yeah, I, I, I like everybody. I, I I just love hip hop. I listen to everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm from LA and I don't even game bank, so it's like shit. You know, I don't give a fuck. I rock rock with Nipsey. I rock some shit out with YG. Goddamn, I do some little pump shit. I I get out with Takashi. I get down with Takashi when he get out. Free 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 six nine. Hey yeah, free six nine <laughs> man. Don't like <laughs> <laughs> stupid stupid. But nah, like I was gonna say, like I hear you on tracks with uh, with some of the West Coast dudes and. Really Devin funny. I, I hear you on tracks with lots of Crips, like Maxo Cream from Houston, yeah, Blue, Blueface yeah. from out west. I will fuck with Blueface. I like Blueface. Yeah, man. I just got niggas, put on the Blueface. Niggas is giving Blueface a hard time, but no, I fuck with Blueface man. and Desto Dub, yeah, you man. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to all the Tatianas out there. Hey, yeah, Desto. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I know some people that know know some of them cats. It's crazy. It's a small world. These dots will get connected sooner than later. So that's what's crazy. Some of that shit might be coming sooner than you think. How the internet makes the music industry is such a small place. Yep, it's yep. so easy to like, like to come up. It's easy and hard. But you got that guys is. like, for example, um, shit. Easy to producers. This young cat I met over the internet through my little bro, uh, uh, Mosiah. Um, so uh, basically, I, some of my newest project projects or songs I've done has been with a, a cat that I met through the internet, um, and he's an LA producer because most of my productions have been down. To cats I met out here in Atlanta. That's what, you know I, what I'm saying. That's what, what I want to get into next. So, that being said, now I kind of got some of that good home feel, and we made some dope ass shit. And uh, Easy the Producer is a fucking. He, he, he got some heat. You know Shouts out Easy the Producer. As a matter of fact, I think he might have got some tracks with Mozzie and a couple of uh, other. Mozzie's Coast, last uh, project was super hard. Yeah, that nigga's hard. So, next, so. like, that's what, what I want to ask you about the beats. Do you work, you know, does Love Hate have in-house producers or do you really just, you know, fuck with what you uh, like? Uh, we don't really have in-house producers per se, but we have like in-house motherfuckers that we kind of have fucked with over the years. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, some cats that kind of have been in the camp fuck with us and kind of got their big break and blew up. Or, you know what I'm saying? Still got beats from motherfuckers like a cat named Pierre Bourne. I got some oh, beats. Oh, no, that, that is one of my favorite producers. I got some beats by oh, him. Oh, man. Um, I got a song that I kind of been sitting on called Do That. It's like a little strip club song. I just performed it at the Schweinbeck um, last industry mixer this past week. Um, and I killed that shit. I was about to say, how was the reception to that? The reception was dope. So it was time to start pressing that a little bit. I've been uh, waiting to shoot a, a visual for it. And it's That's called Do of, That? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm big on visuals. You know what I'm saying? So I like I like videos when I... When I That's kind of the approach, too. That's why it's kind of like easy for me to knock my songs out. Because mm -hmm. I think, like concert i think music video you know what i'm saying like everything that i'm saying is <clears throat> in in preface to my life that i've already lived or that i plan on living you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like i think real visually I, I i honestly just consider myself a visual artist period you know what i'm saying like not necessarily a rapper not necessarily a, a guy entrepreneur like i consider myself a visual artist and mm -hmm. i'm big on presentation Right. So you know what I'm saying. The visual presentation, the sound, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, just how my, how I, how you dress, how I present myself, like all that's very important to me. You know, like the image of everything. You know what I'm saying. So, so it's you, all art to me. You know what I'm saying. So how did you come to this point of view as far as uh, a lens to look, uh, you know, as as far as a lens to view your art through? You know, like what was it? A, a certain videos or certain individuals that like made okay so like yeah. just growing up i always said me and my sister brandon we used to always listen, listen and watch hella music videos rap city uh the, the box basement yeah uh see this world you know, tv see this world hits the street well fuck up yep hits 106 and park just i just always loved that part of the game you know what i'm saying moment of silence like i always like for aj you know freeze bro oh my man God. real shit but you know like i've always been into the big single you know what i'm saying like the hit, you know what I'm saying? Like High I listen to, I, I, yeah, exact, exactly. Like Missy Elliott, Busta Rhymes. Missy Elliott, she has some, you know what I'm saying? She has some incredible videos. Uh, fucking Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, like Death Row, like like there's been some 
There's some ill visuals. And mm -hmm. even of recent, like, I remember shit like when 50 Cent was beefing with, with Rick Ross. In my personal opinion, I feel like Rick Ross consistency and amount of volume that he put out of music and dope music with dope visuals. That's like oh, when incredible. that's when it was was it Jordan Sparks or who was he putting out the Marlon videos with on World Star? Um, like when World Star yeah, was, it was Jordan Sparks. Yeah, yeah. World Star was first cracking and it was like Rick Ross is just beefing with Fifty and Fifty was trying to draw rule that nigga and it didn't work because did Rick not, Ross because created the music this image that was right with when the Albert music. Anastasia EP dropped. Man. Yeah, that's when and BMF dropped. Was, yeah, it was fucking amazing. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't. You couldn't you couldn't hate on it because the music is what it's about anyway, and the music was top notch and the visuals was top notch. Secondly, uh, Schoolboy Q was like that. Schoolboy Q, yeah. uh, ASAP Rocky, who yeah. did a lot of collaboration with Schoolboy Q when they both was first kind of coming out. The fucking everything is purple video. I saw them on the um, on that first little tour, Kendrick and Schoolboy and Danny Brown and all them. You feel me? Oh my God, Danny Brown had put some dope videos out for That's underground the truth. artists that kind of teetered on could have. Blew up or still could possibly blow up to a, a huge artist, but Danny Brown's dope. We put some dope videos out. Shout out Detroit. And you know I think what I'm saying? Danny Brown is meant for Lane, similar to Bass God. You know, I think people he will always have a core group of fans right. like 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 me that, like that will that buy old, the merch old, that will go see him. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So I want to move into the entrepreneur aspect yes, of sir. what you got going on. When right. did you start? You know, what's what did it look like when you started, yeah. Chief Green? The Schmoke era, you know what I mean? What, what was that? Smoke. Okay, so <clears throat> Chief Green. My first rap name was actually the Great Baramichi or Baramichi the Great. Baramichi the Great. You right. definitely a West Coast nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Is it some original shit? I've always been a different type of nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want to get found on Google? In high school, I was you know most unique. So really, that's like weirdest nigga, I guess. Which is cool with me. That's a good thing, bro. That's a good fucking thing. Always been out the box. Always been ahead of my time type shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm a trendsetter in my personal opinion. Shit is a lot of people's personal opinion. Speaking of trendsetting, my man sit down for the interview. We be linking up. And he just got a, got a shoebox just chilling. I'm like, oh, can I, can I see what's inside the shoebox? And then they got the UNC off whites. Just like, you know what? That's just some light work. What's up? <laughs> light work. Like, yeah, shout out Reggie. Shout out my dude. Uh, so, yeah, we was talking about how smoke started. Smoke started. So Smoke is actually one of my ad libs. You know what I'm saying? Smoke. Hey. You know Take a whiff. All that type of shit. I say that shit in my song. It's part of my branding. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be a guy's entrepreneur. Like, uh, I wish I could show you all my, my logo. You know what I'm saying? This is one of the Smoke logos. Or whatever, since we don't lie. I was about to say, I love the Smoke logo. Uh, and we, we got like visuals coming team. soon. Yeah, but so. for those that can't see it, it's, um, it's a multicolor. Uh, it's smoke in like cartoon letters, and the O is smoke puffs. One of the coolest logos I've seen in a, in a hot minute. So, I've always seen myself as a big entrepreneur, and that's what the goal is. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen other people recently obtain the goals that I've always seen myself at. That the people kind of used to be. You know, when people hate on your shit, like ah, I can't that that won't work. This shit's you know what I'm saying that type of shit. It's like I kind of halfway listened, but I never really listened. Like always. Stay steady on that shit, mm -hmm. but I never just went, you know what I'm saying? Right. At it, like like I knew I could or should have. But in the meantime, I'm watching other motherfuckers like, damn, what's Leaf? It's a weed rapper. Like they said, you need to stop rapping about weed so much, Chief Green. Fuck that. Fuck that, exactly. Uh, and then you got Burner with Cookies. Like that's kind of what she I was just is, thinking you know about Burner. Like Cookies is a dope ass brand, but you know what I'm saying? With through Cookies, he was able to brand KK. Exactly. You know? All that shit. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get up there with the big boys. You know what I'm saying? Break yeah. some bread, smoke some big bats with the motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Joints, paper planes, whatever they smoke. You know what I'm saying? But I want, I want it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I'm coming with it. You know what I'm saying? So, we got the lemonade. Chief Green Lemonade. That was kind of like... And so, yeah, tell this, me about... my the... baby. It uh, basically was something to help me brand my music. It was something to give me a platform. To give myself a platform. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you, everyone knows... That it, for especially any independent artists that are out there grinding, trying to make shit happen, you know that trying to find a platform is extremely fucking difficult, and ain't nobody gonna fucking give you one. You know what I'm saying? Over the years, that's what I realized. You try to do this, you go to these other mics and showcases and that, that, that. You ain't really gotta create your no own lane. You know what I'm saying? You gotta create your own fucking lane. So it's like either get your bread up, whatever, create your own platform. So you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Life is fucking rough. So. This is what I came up with, you know what I'm saying? The hood gave me lemons, so we made lemonade. Plain is fucking simple, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I like that. fucking bitch, but who cares? Nobody does, so you better do something. You right. Know what I mean? So this is what the fuck I'm doing. 
I create my own platform. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I got going on. It's my baby. And uh, hopefully in 2019, that should be fully compliant and dispensaries and, and well, and dispensary near you if, if you got one near you. If not, you know what I'm saying? Good luck getting this shit. So about the lemonade. It's top notch, organic, beautiful thing. What was it like? Uh, what was it like? Tell me about the process of perfecting the recipe. Boy, you know, it's been a long process. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, we're not giving that motherfucker away. But, but I know it's gone through some different phases. Just say we start off in the mason jars. Okay. Uh, we're here now in these beautiful, uh, packaged, see-through, whatever. This is a wonderful looking container. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm very proud of my product now. You know what I'm saying? I was about to say um, the the packaging good. is really impressive. Yeah. And did you start with edibles at the same time? Um, actually, I started with edibles before the lemonade way back in the day. Because um, um, I got to ask you about these Cheez-Its. There's edible company called Half Baked. Half Baked? Yeah. Um, and is that still... A local it, artist uh, named Paper Frank. Shout out Paper Frank. Did my logo for that. Okay. Dope-ass classic logo. Paper Frank is like one of the dopest artists in the city, in the world, really. Um, he did that logo for me. And uh, that was when it started. And I was out here doing that for a while. And... Um, <clears throat> Just, you know, hustling tree and all that shit, working my nine to five, doing all the above. And uh, I kind of laid off that for a minute because, you know, it's just, you know, it's just cats in Atlanta wasn't always ready for a lot of the stuff that I was trying to push. You know what I'm saying? As far as like on the guys from New York City, you know what I'm saying? Now yeah. it's fucking everybody in the city. It's crazy how it, but it's a lot of cats out here. two or three years ago, edibles, but people didn't really see what could be done. Right. You know and now everybody sees what can be done. Like, so it's yeah. about finding. You know what I'm saying? Like even with wax and, and, and carts and shit. Like nowadays. Oh, yeah, carts. carts. Niggas was, yeah, was, was not carts like that back in the day. Like when, when you had to spend $150 on a G pen. Yeah. Niggas, niggas wasn't down. Mm -mm. Let's just say I got a fucking graveyard over 10 G pens. Right. <laughs> you talk about the shittiest <laughs> pens, too. Bro. Break on you, know you quick, saying? fast. Man, you know, but hey. They, they opened up the game for the shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure they got some better products now, but uh, I wouldn't know at the time. But if they want to sponsor them, we can talk about something. Hey, sponsorships, welcome. You know what I'm saying? Back secured. You feel me? But other than that, shit, man, it's, it's all about my lemonade. And that was just to give myself the platform and uh, kind of got the ball rolling now. And it's like... I see you doing it's it. It's a blessing, yeah. So I, I hate to keep sticking on the edibles, but... Right. I see that, like, you do a, a, a wide range of edibles. I and do. being, like, I used to help manage a uh, dab lounge in Colorado. So I've seen okay. the full range of edibles. And a lot of them, people don't realize, uh, edibles aren't regulated yet. Right. So you could get some shit that'll fuck you up or some shit that won't do a damn thing. That's true. And to get them to taste good mm -hmm. as well. And so tell me about how you discovered you know, how to put the shit in all these different things. Because I see cheeses in front of me, and nigga, cheeses. Well, let me just say this. I think you've had some of my stuff before. I have, and I'm a fan. Okay, so let's just say that um, most people enjoy my products. Like, what gave you the idea? Good. Not uh, like... Like, okay, so like, the, the, uh, being from L.A., like I just, like I said, I want it in this game. It's like, like I said, I want to create my own platform. Like, I want my uh, chief green... I want Chief Green to help make the world better. I want Chief Green to medicate the world. You know what I'm saying? Like even to this day, like now I'm starting to see the see the the health benefits like hands on. Like when I was younger, it was like just about hustling, and making money, getting some sneakers, uh, you know what I'm saying, some shit like that. The but bag. now, you know what I'm saying? Like now I just hooked up with this cat named Canamedic. You know what I'm saying? I did an event with him, a pop up. You know, what say I'm it saying? again. Met some uh Not do some veterans that. and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I also have a couple cats that. You know, old war vets that have PTSD who don't no, no longer have to take their medicine. You know what I'm saying? No cap. Fuck with the lemonade and some of the other products that I offer. And you know, when you when you hear that, it's like shit. This is that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like that makes you want to like that, that that adds fuel to the flame in itself. It's like okay, I'm really helping people's lives now. You know what I'm saying? This is just not no just no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. And I've seen that firsthand. Like, talking about uh, managing the Adab Lounge right. and veterans. Right. You got dudes that, you know, don't want to be fucked up on painkillers 24-7. The VA is prescribing them all kinds of medicine that they don't really want. Exactly. And the weed, or it's not, and it's also not just the weed. CBD, yeah, et cetera, CBD, is helping right. them out. And that, that's the angle. I can't, no cap. Like, the CBD part of it is obviously automatically 
in any THC infused product. Of um, course. I haven't mastered that part where I can just do pure CBD. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the next part of the game that I'm going to be working on. But as far as like making the products taste good and work, that's just been a blessing. It's just, you know, saying like, I can't even say that I have a recipe. I got a touch now. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. I just know what I'm doing because I've been fucking experimenting and trying this and trying that for so long until I, I got what I got. You know what I'm saying? What, if you start off making omelets, eventually you're going to be the omelet making this motherfucker. You feel me? That's pretty much what it is. Like, I, I've just been fucking around with this shit for so fucking long. I just got to a point to where I am really good at it now. And confident in what I do is shit, I guess I was perfect timing, you know what I'm saying? Shit, mm -hmm. shit got to be legal in the whole United States for the next Soon. five years, you know what I'm saying? In Canada already went full legal. Yo, Mexico shout out to Canada, to finally did the smart thing. Mexico probably about to go full legal, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to be in the fucking ice cream sandwich of full legal. <laughs> <and then> little <laughs> little sprinkles, spots of legal. Sprinkles, spots of legal, uh, legal in, the, in the United States, they're going to have to get with the program. You You're know right. what I'm saying? Like, you would be a dummy. To, to, you know, ain't no dummies. Plus, you know, shit. Old folks that don't want weed to be legal is pretty much dying off anyway. Yep. So. And they they and it's slick they it's slick, they smoke a weed too. And they, and they smoke a weed too. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so shit, my grandpa for sure smoke weed. Like I said, when I was old <laughs> born with this. My grandpa shit. Early ninety something, I don't know, be old. And shit, the last time I seen him, I visited him a couple years back for a family reunion. And I took a good sack down there to Texarkana, Texas. I knew one gonna be Texarkana. God damn, that's Bro, a bonus. My first thought was to visit my grandpa, and I thought I was gonna smoke him out with a couple blunts and I said, "Good ass shit." Yeah. Man, when I said we went down and rented the whole sack. Bro, within two days, the first two days, that shit was gone. I, I was the whole wop the bam. Trust me, when I say I had enough weed for four days, me and my grandpa smoked that shit too. Hey. Fucking great. That's you know funny, bro. Cousin from Dallas, I don't know. Come down with some good shit from the city, but he eventually made it. But that's one thing about weed, man. It does yeah. bring family together yeah. and people in general. Yes, it does. But about smoke, what are the what what are you know without giving any any spoilers away? Because uh -huh. we definitely don't don't want to give away any game. But what are some things that you want to try next? Because right now you've got you know you have the unique drinkable uh drinkable THC products and a. Uh, and diverse edibles, but what would you like, what would you like to try next? You mentioned CBD, but yeah. would you like to uh, well, the full CBD version of the lemonade? You know what I'm saying? Seeing as how CBD is legal in Atlanta now, so mm -hmm. if I can go ahead and get that full CBD version now, then I can put that in storage right now. So you go see these gas stations and they got CBD bullshit right at the cash register. So I can cheat and eliminate CBD right now. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah. Okay. That, that might be something that I'm going ahead and start trying to figure out. But uh, other than that, I've always been into like fashion. That's kind of where the smoke and the logo stuff comes into play to kind of like give me the opportunity to play around in the fashion game and do shit like that. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of fashion? Like, would you say? Streetwear. Streetwear? Yeah, urban fashion. Definitely streetwear and urban fashion. You know what I'm saying? Um, do you have any, uh, any, any grails? Like, like not like style icons because instead of just shouting out brands you know oh, you feel me for real I guess everybody man likes Pharrell. Uh, Pharrell I guess it's like timeless since like got like the Fountain Youth shit cracking I was about to say he's literally timeless <laughs> he's like shit cracking now. other than that just hip hop in general you know what I'm saying just what the hip hop culture has done to world fashion nowadays you know what I'm saying a lot, now a lot of your high fashion obviously is directly impacted by, by streetwear street and streetwear. Um, by black culture really yeah and so that being said that's kind of what I like to bring back uh, and that's kind of shit shout out Plain Jane you know hey Plain Jane I like that urban wear black owned company streetwear shout them out Atlanta you know what I'm saying uh, it's a lot of a lot of that type of stuff like uh, this cat named Chilio who has this fucking uh, line that's been doing shit in Atlanta for a long time been a mentor to a lot of youth over the years, uh, so just like that whole fat farm, Fubu, cross colors, Carl Kanai, okay, like shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I want that to be the trend again. You know what I'm saying? I want that to be popping again. And so, how how would you want to put it out? All the other bullshit in with the Mark Mason Margiela and all that shit. And yeah, get that shit in with it, but also had that shit on too. I know that that's where that's that's the root. Support some you know local. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He shined down all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And so would you want to do like capsule collections or would you want to have like it be a strictly uh, Chief Green merch? Like, or would you like to have a, a couple different do, lanes? I would like to do a lot of collabs, like specifically with the Smoke brand. Like, I would like take that. that yeah. yeah. Like, 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 obviously, if you put me in a box, you would gear me right towards cookies with that brand. But. I think you should go outside the box, like concepts or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but really, what I really want to do with the Smoke brand, and that's kind of like what this is, but like, I want to do it like how Supreme is. Oh, uh, yeah. I, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want Smoke to be kind of like how Supreme is. Like, you can get anything Smoke, you know what I'm saying? If you smoke weed, you got Smoke shit to represent you. Smoke backpacks, Your smoke fanny packs. Your fanny packs, lighters, okay. ashtrays, shovels. I like that. Fucking Floor mats, shower curtains. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, the yeah. full lifestyle bread. Like, every fucking thing. Ikea me. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and unlimited drops. And, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, fucking cop this shit and resell it for sure. And I was like... money, too, but... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with reselling, man. And, uh, and, and all high-quality shit. You know what I'm saying? Quality is key to everything. You know what I'm saying? So, if, if that's top of the line, uh, collabs, like, how even... Supreme dude with hands to make the draws. You know yeah. What I'm like, shit, like, it's just about putting your brand with some quality shit. shit. Supreme got fire extinguishers. <laughs> you feel me? So, it's just, that's all, that's, that's where I'm at with it. So, I want to bring it back around to the music a little bit. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your most recent project for the people that aren't up on your music. Well, my most recent project is actually kind of old. It's uh, Smoke Break Volume 1, but now that I have a little bit of more of a platform that I've created, with my with my lemonade, I've been able to kind of repush it. So that's okay. my volume one. That's uh, out right now on all digital networks with uh, DJ Teflon, hosted by DJ Teflon, and we got volume two on the way, also hosted by DJ Teflon. Um, I got a shitload of music, so okay. Uh, I, so we got some yeah, we got, got some new shit, shit to look forward way. to. Uh, I got two singles, um, also on digital platforms, Lemonade and Dosi Do featuring my homeboy Tylo, OG Tylo. Uh, I definitely need to be on set for those. Yeah, he, um, he's, he's definitely a dope MC from the West Coast, from the Crenshaw District. He got a, a couple of singles out. I'm a big one with Daz and Corrupt. Okay. Oh, he's shit, with Daz and Corrupt? Yeah. That's fire. He recently uh, did a couple of shows with them as well. So that's a big homie. He showed me a lot of love. And um, we got a couple of videos. We're going to do a video from both of those singles. Uh, so like I said, one of the songs that we did is Lemonade, which is kind of like the anthem for Chiefs Green Lemonade. Right. So, we're going to push that real big, you know. And then we got the other one, Dozy Doe. Dozy Doe. Okay. So. That's what's up. But well, shit, where can, it, uh, where, can it, where can we find you, man? Uh, Tell the world how we can get at you. Well, first of all, you can follow me at Chiefs Green Lemonade, uh, C-H-E-I-F-S underscore green underscore lemonade. Or you can find me on my other Instagram page if you want to really just get to me as an artist, Chief Green. 420, and that's the same thing, C-H-E-I-F-G-R-E-N-4-2-0, and uh, that's pretty much it, uh, I got some Twitters and shit out there, I don't really use none of that other stuff, I'm really just be on Instagram, you know what I'm saying, yeah. get me on there, I that got YouTube, way. Chief Green, uh, 22, I think it's my YouTube channel, uh, but all those links are on Instagram, so if you really want to find me and what I got going on, just find me on Instagram, <laughs> click some of the links in the bio, and uh, get at me on the DM if you're trying to holler at your boy. If you want to collab, do some music, do some fashion shit. If you uh, want me at one of your events on some pop-up shit, if you want to book me for a show or any of that type of shit, book me for your event or the lemonade stand, I'll let me. Get at me. Get at me. Get at me. Shout out to my boy Chris Hall. Well, shit, my nigga, thank you for coming through, but yeah. we a black show. So before we get out of here, you got to give out shout-outs. Shout-out. Anybody you want to give a shout-out to? Uh, shoot, shout-out to Most High, first and foremost, because uh, he really Yo. a blessing your boy, you know what I'm saying? I and can definitely speak to that as like well. Everybody else, but you know what I'm saying, and that ain't stopped. But uh, just to have something to push forward, like to really be able to touch your dream finally, like you know what I'm saying, like when you, you know you be going for your shit for so long and to kind of really see it start and you know, getting some traction is kind of dope. So blessings and, and all that good stuff, and thank you to everyone that's been supporting Chief Green Lemonade. Shout out to everybody that's been copying it and reposting us on IG. Shout out to. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to Mom Dukes, Mama Lemon. Shout out to uh, my homeboy Dukes Biz, my, my baby bro, D Hill. Uh, 
Yeah, he's a dope ass artist too. Y'all need to go check him out. He's Shout out D Hill. Too. Um, Blue Bandana. Uh, uh, shit, who else, man? Shout out to all the engineers and producers that fuck with me. Millsy, uh, Pierre, Sauce. Who else? Carby. Uh, Q. Who else? <laughs> you know, I don't like shout outs because it makes you forget people, but. Now you good. If I ever smoke a blunt with you. Shout out to you loud, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the chances are, if I smoke a blunt with you, it was my fucking blunt, so you already know that's love. <laughs> you know, so it's all good, you know what I'm saying? It's all love, so yeah. Well, my brother, thank you for coming through. Shout out to the whole LA, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming through for this special episode. Yes, sir. This has been Blank His Life, the podcast where we talk about what makes you tick. Tune in later on for more interviews and more movie reviews on the other podcasts. Take it easy, y'all.